we're going to get into the reading. All right. Um, it's not a class. We're just reading our four chapters. Uh, I will provide some basic precepts um, as, as we read through to help you with your understanding. If you have questions, um, submit those on the Facebook page for the four chapters a day for the captains. Okay. Submit those for the captains. All right. So let's do this again. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 1. Therefore, thou shalt love the Lord thy God and keep his charge and his statutes and his judgments and his commandments always. And know ye this day, for I speak not with your children which have, which have not known and which have not seen the chastisement of the Lord your God, his greatness, his mighty arm, and his stretched out arm, and his miracles and his acts, which he did in the midst of Egypt unto Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, and unto all his land, and what he did unto the army of Egypt unto their horses and to their chariots and how he made the water of the Red Sea to overflow them as they pursued after you and how the Lord hath destroyed them unto this day and what he did unto you in the wilderness until ye came into this place and what he did unto Dathan and Abiram the sons of Eliab the son of Reuben how the earth opened her mouth and swallow them up and their households and their tents and all their and all the substance that was in their possession in the midst of all Israel but your eyes have seen the great acts of the Lord which he did therefore shall you keep all the commandments which I command you this day that you may be strong and go in and possess the land whither ye go to possess it and that ye may prolong your days in the land, which the Lord swear unto your fathers to give unto them, and to their seed, and the land that floweth with milk and honey. For the land whither thou goest in to possess it is not as the land of Egypt, from whence ye came out, where, the, where thou sowest thy seed, and waterest it with thy foot, as a garden of herbs. But the land whither ye go to possess it is a land of hills and valleys and drinketh water of the rain of heaven and a land which the Lord thy God careth for the eyes of the Lord thy God are of always upon it from the beginning of the year even unto the end of the year and it shall come to pass if ye shall hearken diligently unto my commandments which I command you this day to love the Lord your God and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul that I will give you rain of your land in his due season the first and the latter rain that thou mayest gather thy corn and thy wine and thine oil and I will send grass in thy fields for thy cattle that thou mayest eat and be full take heed to yourselves that your heart be not deceived and ye turn aside and serve other gods and worship them and then put the Lord's wrath and then the Lord's wrath be kindled against you and he shut up the heaven and there be no rain and that ye and that the land yield not her fruit lest ye perish quickly from off the good land which the Lord giveth you therefore shall ye lay up these my words in your heart and in your soul and bind them for a sign upon thy, upon your hand that they may be as frontlets between your eyes and ye shall teach them your children speaking of them when thou sittest in thine house and when thou walkest by the way when thou liest down and when thou risest up thou shalt write them upon the doorpost of thine house upon, and upon thy gates that your days may be multiplied and the days of your children in the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers to give them 
as the days of heaven upon the earth. For if ye diligently keep all the commandments which I command you to do them, to love the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, and to cleave unto him, then will the Lord drive out all these nations from before you, and you shall possess greater nations and mightier than yourselves. Every place whereon the soles of your feet shall tread shall be yours. From the wilderness of and Lebanon, from the river, the river Euphrates, even unto the uttermost sea, your coast uh, shall be your coast. Or, I'm sorry, shall your coast be. There shall no man be able to stand before you. For the Lord your God shall lay the fear of you and the dread of you upon all the land that ye shall tread upon as he has said unto you behold I set before you this day a blessing and a curse a blessing if you keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you this day and a curse if you will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God but turn aside out of the way which I command you this day to go after other gods which ye have not known and it shall come to pass when the Lord thy God hath brought thee into the in unto the land whither thou goest to possess it that thou shalt put the blessing upon Mount Gerizim and the curse upon Mount Ebal are not they I'm sorry are they not on the other side Jordan by the way where the sun goeth down in the land of the Canaanites which dwell in the campaign over against Gilgal beside the plains of, Mo of Morel for ye shall possess Jordan to go in to possess the land which the Lord your God giveth you ye shall possess it and dwell therein and ye shall observe to do all the statutes and judgments which I set before you this day okay so that's chapter 11 let's go back and um got a couple of precepts for what we read over let's go to um verse 4 Deuteronomy 11 and verse 4 um it says and what he did unto the army of Egypt unto their horses and to their chariots how he made the water of the Red Sea to overflow them as they pursued after you and how the Lord hath destroyed them unto this day. So let's go to the book of Exodus, chapter 14, verse 23. Let's let's just read a little bit about what happened. All right. Exodus chapter 14. And verse 23. And the Egyptians pursued and went in after them to the midst of the sea, even all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots and his horsemen. And it came to pass that in the morning, watch the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and of the cloud and troubled the host of the Egyptians and took off their chariot wheels and they drave them heavily so that the Egyptians said let us flee from the face of Israel for the Lord fighteth for them against the Egyptians and the Lord stretched out his hand I'm sorry and the Lord said unto Moses stretch out thine hand over the sea that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians upon their chariots and upon their horsemen and Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea and the sea returned to his strength when the morning appeared and the Egyptians fled against it and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea and the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen and all the host of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them there remained not so much as one of them okay so when we read in uh, Deuteronomy 11 um, this is part of the history that was being recounted 
by Moses. He said, remember what your father, what the Lord did for your fathers. All right. Let's jump down to verse six. And it says, and what he did unto Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, the son of Reuben, how the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up and their households and their tents and all the substance that was theirs that was their possession in the midst of Israel. So where did this history where do we read this history? Let's go to Numbers chapter sixteen. Let's go to Numbers chapter sixteen verse twenty eight. I just want to get to the point. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna, um, just to set it up, I'm gonna read verse two and three, and then we're gonna jump down. And it says, And they rose up before Moses with certain of the children of Israel, 250 princes of the assembly famous in the congregation men of renown and they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron and said unto them ye take too much upon you seeing all the congregation are holy every one of them and the Lord is among them wherefore then lift ye up yourselves above the congregation of the Lord so basically what they're saying is we are holy so, so why y'all trying to act like, you know, uh, uh, we can't all do the work? Why well, we got to follow you, okay? You have those spirits that are back on the earth today. They come into the congregation, and, and after they spend a, a period of time, you know, now they want to rise up and think that um, uh, they're wiser than, than leadership, than the bishop and the deacons, okay? So nothing new under the sun. Let's jump down. All right, when you get a chance, read all the, read this history again. I know we've already covered it in four chapters a day, but read it again. All right, let's jump down to verse 28. And Moses said, Hereby you shall know that the Lord has sent me to do all these works, for I have not done them of my own mind. If these men die the common death of all men, or if they be visited after the visitation of all men, then the Lord hath not sent me. But if the Lord make a but if the Lord make a new thing and the earth open her mouth and swallow them up and with all that appertain unto them and they go down quick into the pit then ye shall understand that these men have provoked the Lord all right let's jump down to verse 32 and the Lord and I'm sorry and the earth open her mouth and swallow them up in their houses and all the men that appertained unto Korah and all their goods, they and all that appertained to them went down alive into the pit and the earth closed them up and they perished from among the congregation. All right. So that's the history that uh, was being recounted. Okay. So when we go back and you go to uh, Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 4 you can read that history in exodus 14 and 23 verse 6 you can go to numbers chapter 28 all right let's jump down let's go to let's go to uh verse 13 deuteronomy 11 and 13 let's see what happened here deuteronomy chapter 11 and verse 13 and it shall come to pass if ye shall hearken diligently unto my commandments which I command you this day to love the Lord your God and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul that I will give you rain the rain of your land in his due season the first and the latter rain that thou mayest gather thy corn and thy wine and thine oil and I will send grass into thy fields for thy cattle that thou mayest eat and be full so where do we read that let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 28 
Now you're gonna we're just gonna touch on it because in a few days you'll be reading Deuteronomy chapter twenty eight. All right. But this goes into the blessings when we kept the commandments. Verse 11. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 11. Okay. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, in the fruit of thy body, and in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy ground. In the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give thee, the Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heaven to give the rain unto thy land in his season, and to bless all the work of thine hand, and thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. Okay? So that's where we read, that's where we read that, is that um when we kept the commandments, he said that he would give us in our land rain in its due season. Okay. Let's go back to Deuteronomy 12 and verse 16. Take heed to yourselves that your heart be not turned. I'm sorry, be not deceived. And ye turn aside and serve other gods and worship them. Then and then. The Lord's wrath be kindled against you, and he shut up the heaven, that there be no rain, and that the land yield not her fruit, lest ye perish quickly from off the good land which the Lord giveth you. So now, as we read the first part, that was the blessing. We keep the commandments, we'll get rain in our due season in our land. The second part is the curse. We go aside, we serve other gods, now he said he was shut up heaven and we won't get rain. So let's read, let's go back to Deuteronomy 28. Let's read that. Deuteronomy chapter 28. Again, I'm not gonna really go into this because you're gonna read Deuteronomy 28 in a few days, and and um and uh the teacher may go a little further into it, but I'm just gonna give you the basic precepts for it. Um uh, Deuteronomy 28, 23. And thy heaven that is over thy head shall be brass, and the earth that is under that is under thee shall be iron. The Lord shall make the rain of thy land powder and dust. From heaven shall it come down upon thee until thou be destroyed. Why are we going to be destroyed? Because if you don't have any rain, you have drought. What's going to happen when you have drought? You don't. You can't grow your crops, right? Not only that, if there's no grass, then our animals don't have anything to feed off of. So now you're going to have lean animals. You're not going to have uh, meat to eat. All right. Let's get one precept in Jeremiah to see where that happened. Okay. In history. Remember, things written aforetime were written for our learning. All right. So let's go to Jeremiah chapter 14. Okay. So. This is what Moses was teaching us before we went into the promised land. All right, Jeremiah chapter 14 and verse 4. It says, Because the ground is chapped, for there was no rain in the earth, the plowmen were ashamed, they covered their heads. Yea, the hind also cowed in the field and forsook it, because there was no grass and the wild asses did stand in the high places they snuffed up the wind like dragons their eyes did fail because there was no grass O Lord thou though our iniquities testify against us do thou it for thy name's sake for we I mean for our backslidings are many we have sinned against thee so that's what we were reading back here in Deuteronomy chapter 12 in verse 16 to 17 that take heed that we don't serve other gods because if we serve other gods what was going to happen our Lord was going to get mad the wrath of, of, of his anger was going to be that he would shut off the rain okay and then we would suffer alright um, let's jump down to verse 26 alright let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 11 verse 26 
And it says, Behold, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse, a blessing if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day. That's what we are just reading. That's Deuteronomy chapter 28, 1 through 14. And a curse if you will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God, but turn aside out of the way, which I command you this day to go after other gods, which ye have not known. That's the curses that came upon us. That is Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Okay. All right. So let's jump down and start now in Deuteronomy chapter 12. Okay. Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 1. These are the statutes and judgments which ye shall observe to do in the land, which the Lord God of thy fathers giveth thee to possess it all the days that ye live upon the earth. Ye shall utterly destroy all the places wherein the nations which ye shall possess serve their gods, upon the high mountains and upon the hills and under every green tree. And ye shall overthrow their altars and break down their pillars and burn their groves with fire. And ye shall hew down the graven images of their gods and destroy the names of them out of that place. Ye shall not do so unto the Lord your God, but unto the place which the Lord your God shall choose out of all your tribes to put his name there, even unto his habitation shall ye seek. And thither thou shalt come, and thither ye shall bring your burnt offerings, and your sacrifices, and your tithes, and heave offerings, and your hand, and heave offerings of your hand, and your vows, and your free will offerings, and the firstlings of your herds, and of your flocks. And there ye shall eat before the Lord your God, and ye shall rejoice in all that ye put your hand unto. Ye and your households, wherein the Lord thy God hath blessed thee. Ye shall not do after all these, th after all the things that we do here this day. Every man whatsoever is right in his own eyes. For as for ye are not as ye come, I'm sorry. For ye are not as yet come to the rest, and to the inheritance which the Lord thy God giveth, the Lord your God giveth you. But when you go over Jordan and dwell in the land which the Lord your God giveth you to inherit, and when he giveth you rest from all your enemies round about you, so that ye dwell in safety, then there shall be a place which the Lord your God shall choose to cause his name to dwell there. Thither shall ye bring all that I command you, your burnt offerings and your sacrifices, your tithes and your heave offering of your hand and all your choice vows which ye have vowed unto the Lord and ye shall rejoice before the Lord your God ye and your sons and your daughters and your men servants and your maid servants and the Levite that is within your gates for as much as he hath no part nor inheritance with you take heed saying take heed again meaning beware take heed to thyself that thou offer not thy burnt offerings in every place that thou seest, but in the place which the Lord shall choose in one of thy tribes, there thou shalt offer thy burnt offerings, and there thou shalt do all that I command thee, notwithstanding thou, thou mayest kill and eat flesh in all thy gates, whatsoever thy soul lusteth after according to the blessing of the Lord thy God, which he hath given thee, the unclean and the clean may eat thereof, as of the roebuck and as of the heart. Only ye shall not eat the blood, ye shall pour it upon the earth as water. Thou mayest not eat within thy gates the tithe of the corn, or of thy wine, or of thy oil, or the firstlings of thy herds, or of thy flock, nor any of thy vows which thou vowest, nor thy free will offerings, or heave or heave offering of thine hand, but thou mayest eat them before the Lord thy God in the place which the Lord thy God shall choose, 
thou and thy son and thy daughter and thy manservant and thy maidservant and the Levite that is within thy gates. And thou shalt rejoice before the Lord thy God in all that thou puttest thine hands unto. Take heed to thyself that thou forsake not the Levite as long as thou livest upon the earth. When the Lord thy God shall enlarge thy border as he has promised thee, and thou shalt say, I will eat flesh, because thy soul longeth to eat flesh. Thou mayest eat flesh, whatsoever thy soul lusteth after. If the place which the Lord thy God hath chosen to put his name there be too far from thee, then thou shalt kill of thy herd and of thy flock, which the Lord hath given thee, as I have commanded thee. And thou shalt eat it in thy gates whatsoever thy soul lusteth after, even as the roebuck and the heart is eaten. So thou shalt eat them. The unclean and the clean shall eat of them alike. Only be sure that thou eat not the blood, for the blood is the life, and, and thou mayest not eat the life with the flesh. Thou shalt not eat it. Thou shalt pour it upon the earth as water. Thou shalt not eat it, that it may go well with thee and with thy children after thee, when thou shalt do that which is right in the sight of the Lord. Only thy holy things which thou hast, and thy vows thou shalt take, and go unto the place which the Lord thy God shall choose. And thou shalt offer thy burnt offerings, the flesh and the blood, upon the altar of the Lord thy God, and the blood of thy sacrifices shall be poured out upon the altar of the Lord thy God, and thou shalt eat the flesh. Observe and hear all these words which I command thee, that it may go well with thee and with thy children after thee forever, when thou doest that which is good and right in the sight of the Lord thy God. When the Lord thy God shall cut off the nations from before thee, whether thou goest to possess them, and thou succeedest them, and dwellest in their land, take heed that thou be not snared by following them. After that, they be destroyed from before thee. And thou inquire, not after their gods, saying, How did these nations serve their gods? Even so will I do likewise. Thou shalt not do so unto the Lord thy God. For every abomination to the Lord which he hateth have they done unto their gods for even their sons and their daughters have they burnt in the fire to their gods what thing soever i command you observe to do it thou shalt not add thereto nor diminish from it okay so now that's uh deuteronomy chapter 12 all right now um, let's go back hit a couple of key points let's go back to um, verse 1 Deuteronomy chapter 12 verse 1 let's go back to verse 1 right quick and it says these are the statutes and judgments which ye shall observe to do in the land right which the Lord thy God which the Lord God of thy fathers giveth thee to possess it all the days that ye live upon the earth. So now, we know that the Lord gave our fathers land that other nations were living in. We had to go to war with those nations to take that land, right? So it says, these are the statutes and the judgments. So let's go to Psalms chapter 147 verse 19. Psalms chapter 147 verse 19 he showeth his word unto Jacob his statutes and his judgments unto Israel he showeth his word unto Jacob his statutes and his judgments unto Israel what do we read in Deuteronomy 12 and 1 these are the statutes and judgments which ye shall observe to do in the land. So we're reading the same thing here. Psalms chapter 147 verse 19. Again, 
He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He hath not dealt so with any nation. As for his judgments, they have not known them. Okay, so you can precept that because we, we, we bring this out a lot. Okay, Psalms chapter 147, verse 19 to 20. We bring it out almost every camp probably. Okay, he showeth the, the, his word unto Jacob and his, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. That's what we're reading right here. All right, in Deuteronomy chapter 12. Everybody knows that when you read the book of Deuteronomy, that the Lord was speaking unto his people. Okay, so that's one of the precepts that you want to you wanna keep under your belt right there. Verse 2, this is back to Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 2. It says, you shall utterly destroy uh, all the places wherein the nations which ye shall possess serve their gods upon the high mountains and upon the hills under every green tree. Let's go to 2 Kings chapter 17 and verse 9. And it says, And the children of Israel did secretly those things that were not right against the Lord their God. And they built them high places in all their cities, from the tower of the watchmen to the fenced cities. And they set them up images and groves in, in every high hill and under every green tree. And there they burnt incense in all the high places, as did the heathen. Okay, it says, as did the heathen whom the Lord carried away before them and wrought wicked things to provoke the Lord to anger. For they served, for they served idols whereof the Lord had said unto them, ye shall not do this thing. Okay, so he said, the Lord said, you should not do this thing. So where do we read that? Deuteronomy 12 and 2. You shall utterly destroy all the places wherein the nations which ye serve, which ye shall possess, served their gods upon the high mountains and upon the high hills and under every green tree. So what is that showing you? It's showing you that even after we were being warned, we were still idolatrous. All right. Let's jump down. Actually, let me get um, Proverbs three. In verse 31, it says, Envy thou not the oppressor and choose none of his ways. Well, the reason he became our oppressor is because when we started to serve his God, which served their gods, which we were warned not to do, God gave them the rule over us. Okay? That's why now. They became our oppressors. And the Bible told us, Envy not, thou not the oppressor, choose none of his ways. So us even today um, are, are unlearned and lost brothers and sisters that are still serving other gods, whether they call themselves atheists, whether they call themselves Christian in modern day Christianity, um, whether they, you know, uh, any other religion, Sikhism, Buddha, Islam, we're serving, they're serving other gods, okay? Lord warned us not to do that. Uh, let's jump down to Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 5. But unto the place which the Lord your God shall choose out of all your tribes to put his name there, even unto this habitation shall ye seek, and thither thou shalt come. Okay? So where did the Lord um, choose to put his name? Let's go to Second Chronicles. Let's go to Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles chapter six. And verse six. And it says, But I have chosen Jerusalem that my name might be there. 
and have chosen David to be over my people. Okay, so that's where the Lord chose. He chose out of all the tribes. He chose his place where he would put his name for the temple to be in Jerusalem. All right, in Jerusalem. Uh, let's jump down to verse 9. For ye are not as yet come to rest, to the rest, and to the inheritance which the Lord your God giveth you. What is the rest? The rest is when he gave us rest from our enemies, which we read in verse 10. All right. So this is why you'll hear us pull this scripture out on the street. Let's get Micah chapter 2, verse 10. If you've never understood when you watch one of the videos, why are they saying this is not our rest? Well, if you've been paying attention to the news and the classes that the bishop has been doing um, about these brothers that are now waking up and saying, yeah, we the children of Israel, uh, and you're seeing what's happening to them. You're, they're finding out that this is not our rest because now uh, employment gone, social media gone, you know, money gone. Um, the the it's, it's not a threat with Esau. Esau gonna deliver on on this thing because he has a lot to lose. He he knows his time is short. He knows he's gonna lose his kingdom, but still, out of fear, the fear tactic is how he he's ruling, and the, and the Lord gave him that right now. So let's read that Micah. Chapter 2, verse 10 says, Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest. Because it is polluted, it shall destroy you, even with a sore destruction. So when it says, Arise ye and depart, it doesn't mean for us to leave physically, but we have to come up out of the ways of this place. And it says, Because this is not your rest. Why is it not our rest? Because our enemies, we're dwelling right now, amongst our enemies all right deuteronomy 28 again we have to serve them what for food and for shelter for clothing and the one of all things this is not our rest right now all right so if you didn't have any understanding of that that's what that means we are still amongst our enemies and we're serving our enemies all right and we're waiting for the time when the one-third has repented 144,000 leaders are sealed and christ makes his return and gets us out of this place and sets us back in our own land. All right. All right. Let's go back. Deuteronomy chapter 12. Um, let's go to 15. Let's go to 15. Let's clear this up a little bit. It says, notwithstanding, thou mayest kill and eat the flesh, or eat flesh in all thy gates, whatsoever thy soul lusteth after. According to the blessing of the Lord thy God, which he hath given thee, the unclean and the clean may eat thereof, as the roebuck and as of the heart. Now, it's not talking about food, because when it says the unclean and the clean may eat thereof, as of the roebuck. Now, this is what we can eat, the roebuck. And as of the heart. We're going to read that in chapter 14. So what does that mean? The unclean and the clean. Let's go to Deuteronomy 15 verse 22. Deuteronomy 15 and 22 says. Thou shalt eat it within thy gates. The unclean and the clean person shall eat it alike as the roebuck and as the heart. So when you're reading that in Deuteronomy 12 and 15, you're reading the unclean and the clean is referring to unclean and clean persons. Okay. All right. So just remember, we had, we had servants. All right. Just like we're going to have servants again. All right. Let's go to... Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh, all right. Let's jump down to verse 30. Deuteronomy 12 and 30. All right. Take heed to thyself that thou be not snared by following them. After that, they be destroyed from before thee. And thou, and that thou inquire 
not after their gods, saying, How did these nurse nations serve their gods? Even so will I do likewise. Because we we have a history of following what the other nations do. But it says that take heed to thyself that thou be not snared. What is that referring to? Let's go to Psalms chapter 106. Let's see what that's referring to. Psalms chapter 106. Okay, again, we're just giving you some basic precepts, basic understanding um, for you to understand certain of the, the, the verses that may give you some uh, that you that may give you problems. All right. So let's go to Psalms chapter 106, verse 34. They did not destroy the nations concerning whom the Lord commanded them but were mingled among the heathen, the heathen being what? The other nations, and learned their works, and they served their idols, which were a snare unto them. Okay, they served their idols, which were a snare unto them. Yea, they sacrificed their sons and their daughters unto devils. That's what the Lord was saying. Don't do these things, because this is what they do unto their gods. All right? It says, and shed innocent blood, even the blood of their sons and of their daughters, whom they sacrificed unto the idols of Canaan, and the land was polluted with blood. Thus were they defiled with their own works and went a whoring with their own inventions. All right. So, and it says, um, therefore was the wrath of the Lord kindled against his people in so much that he abhorred his own inheritance. The Lord said we're not supposed to do that. All right. That would be a snare unto us. And, and what did it do? It got us right here where we are now scattered amongst the heathen serving them. That's how it became a snare, you know, to make it plain. There's other, a lot of other precepts, but just to give you the understanding, that's why we're here now. All right. Okay. So let's go to, let's read um, Deuteronomy chapter 13 now. Let's read through Deuteronomy chapter 13. All right, verse one. If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and give it thee a sign or a wonder and the sign or the wonder come to pass, whereof he spake unto thee, saying, let us go after other gods, which thou hast not known and let us serve them. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams. For the Lord your God proveth you to know whether ye love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Ye shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice. And ye shall serve him and cleave unto him. And that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall, shall be put to death because thou hast spoken. I'm, I'm sorry. Because he has spoken to turn you away from the Lord your God, which brought you up out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you out of the house of bondage to thrust thee out of the way which the Lord thy God commanded thee to walk in. So shalt thou put evil away from the midst of thee. If thy brother, the son of thy mother, or thy son, or thy daughter, or the wife of thy, bro of thy bosom, or thy friend, which is as thine own soul, entice thee secretly, saying, Let us go and serve other gods, which thou hast not known, thou nor thy fathers, namely of the gods of the people which are round about you, nigh unto thee or far off from thee, from one end of the earth, even unto the other end of the earth. Thou shalt not consent unto him, nor hearken unto him, Neither shall thine eye pity him, neither shalt thou spare, neither shalt thou conceal him, meaning hide him, okay? But thou shalt surely kill him. Thine hand shall be first upon him to put him to death, and afterwards the hand of all, thy, all the people. And thou shalt stone him with stones that he die. Because he has sought to thrust thee away from the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt 
from the house of bondage. And all Israel shall hear and fear and shall do no more any such wickedness as this is among you. If thou shalt hear, say in one of thy cities, which the Lord thy God hath given thee to dwell there, to dwell there, saying, Certain men, the children of Belial, are gone out from among you, and have withdrawn the inhabitants of their city, saying, Let us go and serve other gods, which ye have not known. Then shalt thou inquire and make search, and ask diligently, and behold, if it be truth, and the thing certain that such abomination is wrought among you, thou shalt surely smite the inhabitants of that city with the edge of the sword, destroying it utterly, and all that is therein, and the cattle thereof with the edge of the sword. And thou shalt gather all the spoil of it into the midst of the street thereof, and shalt burn it with and shall burn with fire the city and all the spoil of thereof every whit for the Lord thy God and it shall be an heap forever and it shall not be built again and there shall and there shall cleave not of thy of the cursed thing to thine hand that the Lord may turn from his from the fierceness of his anger and show thee mercy and have compassion upon thee and multiply thee as he has sworn unto thy fathers when thou shalt hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God to keep all his commandments which I command thee this day to do that which is right in the eyes of the Lord thy God. Okay, so that is Deuteronomy chapter 13. So let's go back and hit a couple of the uh, high points and important points and get a couple of precepts. Um, verse 5, Deuteronomy chapter 13, verse 5, and it says, And that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death because he has spoken to turn you away from the Lord your God. Now, we can't put anybody to death, all right? We can't, we don't have that power. Um, we are in the land of our oppressors. Um, so we can't, we can't exact that kind of judgment. So, if we can't put them to death what do we do today what do we do today when men or women try to turn you away from the Lord your God amongst the congregation Romans 16 okay because we, we don't advocate any kind of violence alright uh, we just gonna read you the word of the Lord all right. The Lord says, "All souls are mine. The deceived and the deceiver are His." Okay, so you know we're not gonna lay hands on you, but we're gonna do this. This is Romans chapter sixteen, verse seventeen. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned and avoid them. Okay, I'll read it again. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned and avoid them. What is the doctrine that we have learned and are learning? Let's get that in Proverbs. Uh, chapter 4 verse 2 and it says for I give you good doctrine forsake ye not my law okay so now let's read it again in Deuteronomy chapter 13 verse 5 and that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death because he has spoken to turn you away from the Lord your God how is he turning us away from the Lord our God when you go contrary to the laws of marriage when you go contrary to the laws of the Sabbath okay when you go contrary to the laws of, of how we raise our children righteously when you go contrary to the laws of of how uh, when there's a ought between your brother 
you go to your brother and your brother alone and you try to gain your brother these are things that plague Israel when you uh, when we do these things and 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 you secretly entice others to come with you um, those men have to be put out those women have to be put out okay from among the body all right uh, let's jump down to verse 6 if thy brother the son of thy mother or thy son or thy daughter or thy wife of thy bosom or thy friend which is which is as thy own soul entice thee secretly saying let us go serve other gods which thou has not known thou nor thy fathers so now they're enticing you to go away from what the commandments let us go serve other gods okay so now let's see Let's go to, um, what was the precept in Proverbs? It was Proverbs 4 and 2. Proverbs 4 and 2. All right. Uh, let's go to Exodus. Let's go to Exodus chapter 23 and verse 2. Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil. Okay, so if they're trying to entice you secretly to follow them, to serve other gods, the, the, the law says don't follow them, to do evil, that's evil, okay? Let's get another one, let's go to the book of Sirach, let's go to Ecclesiasticus, chapter 4. I like this one because... Um, chapter 4 verse 22 Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 22 I like this one because if thy brother the son of thy mother or thy son or thy daughter or the wife of thy bosom or thy friend which is which is as thine own soul these are people that are close to us okay these are people that are very close to us people that can have influence on you alright let's read Sirach 4.22 it says, accept no person against thy soul. Now, so if they're trying to secretly entice you to serve other gods, your soul's at stake. Your salvation is at stake, prayer. It says, accept no person against thy soul, and let not the reverence of any man cause thee to fall. What's the reverence of any man? That is, you know what? I, I trust this person. I love this person. You know, I don't think they would steer me wrong. But if they got the devil on them, they're going to lead you astray. Okay? They're going to lead you astray. Don't let someone else uh, cause you to lose your crown. Right? As, as the leadership has said before. All right? Don't do it. Don't do it. Because can't nobody make you do anything. All right? But they can influence you. Don't, don't, uh, don't, don't give them credit like that and give them um, the ability to lead you astray. All right. Uh, let's see. Let's jump down to verse 13. When it says uh, certain men, this is Deuteronomy chapter 13, verse 13. This is Deuteronomy 13, verse 13. All right. It says certain men the children of Belial are gone out from among you and have withdrawn the inhabitants of their city, saying, Let us go and serve other gods, which ye have not known. Let's jump down to verse 16, because this is the point. So they, they entice you, saying, Let's go serve other gods. You following them. Um, I'm sorry, let's jump down to 15. 15. Thou shalt surely smite the inhabitants of that city with the edge of the sword, destroying it utterly, and all that is therein, and the cattle thereof with the edge of the sword. And thou shalt gather all the spoil of it into the midst of the street thereof, and shalt burn with fire the city and all the spoil thereof, every whit for the Lord thy God, and it shall be in heap forever, and it shall not be built again. So, I want to give you an example of, of um, uh, in um, Joshua. Let's go to the book of Joshua, chapter 7. 
of this type of judgment. All right. Joshua chapter 7. I'm going to read verse 1, and we're going to jump down to verse 24. But the children of Israel committed a trespass in the accursed thing. And Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took of the accursed thing, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. So one man's folly and the anger of the Lord was against all of us. Okay, jump down to verse 24. You get a chance, y'all go back and read it on your own, all right? And Joshua and all Israel with him took Achan, the son of Zerah, and the silver and the garment and the wedge of gold and his sons and his daughters and his oxen and his asses and his sheep and his tent and all that he had. And, and they brought them unto the valley of Accor, and Joshua said, Why hast thou troubled us? And the Lord shall trouble thee this day. And all Israel stoned them with stones and burned them with fire. And they that had stoned them with stones. And they raised over him a great heap of stones unto this day. So the Lord turned from the fierceness of his anger, wherefore the name of that place was called the Valley of Achor unto this day. So that was righteous judgment. And then that anger, that wrath of the Lord was stayed and the people were able to move forward because this is why we are in the condition that we're in. And this is why This is why um, we suffer like we suffer because remember, let's go back to Deuteronomy 13. Let's read verse eight again. And it says, thou shalt not consent unto him nor hearken unto him, neither shall thy eye pity him, neither shalt thou spare him, neither shalt thou conceal him. So when we conceal um, wickedness, we put all the nation in jeopardy okay and right there is an example of uh, when you go back and you read the history where we were having wars and not losing any men now we have now we go into battle and we losing men and that was like hey man something ain't right something ain't right the lord ain't with us what's going on and they had to search and seek out joshua had to search and seek out who committed the crime in israel who's uh, who's serving other gods? Who's worshiping um, um, the uh, the goods of the other nations that it was told unto us? Don't don't take those things. Okay, that's how important it is. Um, that's like why we read. We open up and we read Leviticus five and one. If you know of anything that you're supposed to utter it, you're supposed to um, you're supposed to mention that thing. I know a lot of us grew up snitches get stitches. I grew up the same way. Um, you know, <laughs> doing all kind of foolishness, all right, and and be quick to threaten somebody if they tell you. But in our repentance, we got to understand that this is why we're in the condition we're in, and and, and we got to teach righteousness, all right. It's that simple, all right. So we got one more chapter. Let's go on and read and get through it. Um, Deuteronomy chapter fourteen, all right. Deuteronomy chapter fourteen. So let's start at verse one. All right. It says, "Ye are the children of the Lord your God. You shall not make cuttings. Uh, you shall not cut yourself, nor make any baldness between your eyes for the dead. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God, and the Lord hath chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto Himself above all the nations that are upon the earth. Thou shalt not eat." any abominable thing. Now, I want to pause right there just for a second. I know I've been going over it at the end, but I don't want to forget this. When you go back, let's go back. Let's read um, let's read in Deuteronomy 12. Let's read in Deuteronomy 12 uh, 
15. Let's read that right quick. It says, Notwithstanding, thou mayest kill and eat flesh in all thy gates, whatsoever thy soul lusteth after. Somebody read that and think, well, I can eat anything. No, you cannot eat anything. Okay? You cannot eat anything. So let's read this again. In Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 3. Thou shalt not eat any abominable thing. So when it's saying whatsoever thy soul lusteth after... That is within the guidelines of clean foods, okay? All right? I just wanted to get that out the way quick because I know in, in, when you go into Colossians in the New Testament, which I'm not going to go into that today. Um, we'll, we'll get there when we get there. Or you go watch uh, uh, videos concerning um, the eating of clean and unclean foods. Sometimes our people still, um, I'll just say unlearned or ignorant, uh, they think that um, they can eat anything and that now, uh, as long as I pray over it, I can eat it. No, that's not true. Um, again, you go in the New Testament, the Colossians, that's just a misunderstanding that a lot of our people have. The law says, thou shalt not eat any abominable thing. All right? Now, um, let's go... Um, Verse 4, Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 4. These are the beasts which ye shall eat. The ox, because some of y'all love ox tails. <laughs> All right. The sheep and the goat, the hart and the roebuck, and the fallow deer, and the wild goat, and the pie guard, and the wild ox, and the camoys, and every beast that parted the hoof, and cleaveth the cleft into two claws. And cheweth the cud among the beasts, that ye shall eat. Nevertheless, these ye shall not eat of them that chew of the cud, or ye shall not eat of them that chew of the, of the cud, or of them that divide the cloven hook, as the camel and the hare and the coney. For they chew the cud, but divide not the hoof, there, therefore they are unclean unto you and the swine because it divided the hoof yet to it not the cud it is unclean unto you you shall not eat of their flesh nor touch their carcass these shall ye shall eat of all that are in the waters all that have fins and scales shall ye eat and whatsoever hath not fins and scales, ye may not eat it. It is unclean unto you. Of all clean birds ye shall eat. But these are they of which ye shall not eat. The eagle and the ossifrage and the osprey and the glee and the kite and the vulture after his kind. And every raven after his kind. And the owl and the nighthawk and the cuckoo. And the hawk after his kind, the little owl, and the great owl, and the swan, and the pelican, and the gyre eagle, and the cormorant, and the stork, and the heron, after her kind, and the lapwing, and the bat. And every creeping thing that flieth is unclean unto you, they shall not be eaten. But of all the but of all clean fowls, you may eat. You shall not eat that. I'm sorry. You shall not eat of anything that dieth of itself. Thou shalt give it unto the stranger that is in thy gates, that he may eat it, or that thou mayest sell it unto, the, unto an alien. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. Thou shalt not seethe a kid in his mother's milk. Thou shalt truly tithe all the increase of thy seed that thy bring that the field bringeth forth year by year. And thou shalt eat uh, before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose to place his name there, the tithe of thy corn, of thy wine, and of thine oil, and the firstlings of thy herds, and of thy flocks, that thou mayest learn to fear the Lord thy God always. 
And if the way be too long for thee, so that thou art not able to carry it, or if the place be too far from thee, which thou, I mean, sorry, which the Lord thy God shall choose to set his name there, when the Lord thy God has blessed thee, then thou shalt turn it into money and bind it, and bind up the money in thine hand, and shall go unto the place which the Lord thy God shall choose, and thou shalt bestow that money for whatsoever thy soul lusteth after, for ox or for sheep or for wine or for strong drink or for whatsoever thy soul desire and thou shalt eat there before the Lord thy God and thou shalt rejoice thou and thine household and the Levite that is within thy gates thou shalt not forsake him for he hath no part nor inheritance with thee and at the end of three years thou shalt bring forth all thine time all the tithe of thine increase the same year and shall lay, up, lay it up within thy gates. And the Levite, because he hath no part nor inheritance with thee, and the stranger and the fatherless and the widow which are come within thy gates shall come and shall eat and be satisfied. And the Lord thy God may bless thee in all the work of thine hand which thou doest. Okay? So now, that is the end of Deuteronomy chapter 14. Uh, let's jump back through a little bit. Um, we already hit that uh, you can't just eat anything you want. Um, I don't have any pictures uh, set up um, to show you, but uh, when it says in verse 1, you're the children... For ye are the children of the Lord your God. You shall not cut yourselves, uh, nor make any baldness between your eyes. Okay, this um, was something that we got from the other nations. Like, for instance, um, you'll see a lot of the the young folks how they 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 cut those they cut their eye their um, eyebrows. You know, they're making designs in it now, but uh, we're not supposed to be doing that. Also, um, the uh, the uh, cutting yourselves, um, that was another, uh, uh, let, me, let me find that right quick. That was another form of torture, all right, that we would do. The Lord don't require that of us. The Lord only requires of us to be righteous and uh, keep his commandments, okay? Let me find that um, right quick. Let me see if I got that in. Uh, let me look at my other Bible right quick. See, uh, fourteen. Mm. Okay, wait a minute. Uh, Bear with me just a second, y'all. Bear with me just a second. Okay, let's go to uh let's go to Jeremiah forty one right quick. <laughs> I'm just gonna get to the point. Um verse five. Jeremiah chapter forty one verse five. And there came certain 
from Sikkim, from Silo, and from Samaria, even four score, that's 80, uh, men having their beards shaven and their clothes rent and having cut themselves uh, with offerings and incense in their hand to bring them to the house of the Lord. Okay, so that's an example of when we go back to uh, Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 1. Ye are the children of the Lord, your God. Ye shall not cut yourselves, nor make any baldness uh, between your eyes for the dead. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. And the Lord hath chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself above all nations. So now let's go to 1 Peter. First Peter chapter 2 verse 9 it says but ye are a chosen generation a royal priesthood a whole and holy nation a peculiar people that should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light okay who was Peter talking to all right first Peter 1 and 1 Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, unto the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, uh, Asia, and Bithynia. So, you said strangers. Who are those strangers? Let's go to Acts 2. Go to the book of Acts, chapter 2. All right. Acts 2 and 5. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Let's jump down to verse 9. Parthenians and Medes and Elamites and dwellers in Mesopotamia and in Judea and Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia. Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia. Let's go back to 1 Peter 1 and 1. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ unto the strangers, scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia and Bithynia. So we saw Pontus and Cappadocia and Asia listed as being men that were Jews that were scattered in these areas. All right. Let's go to the book of Obadiah. That's one way you could prove who those um, those strangers were in the New Testament. There's many other ways. I'm just like I said, just give you some basic precepts to help understand we got uh many classes three times a day that you can tune in and you can get uh the understanding greater understanding all right if you're not part of the body uh let me go to let me find it right quick what do i want and these pages sticking together use this one there we go see how quick I found it in this Bible alright um, let's go to the book of Obadiah verse 12 it says but thou shouldest not have looked on the day of thy brother in the day that he became a stranger okay in the day that he became a stranger neither shouldest thou have rejoiced over the children of Judah in the day of their destruction. Okay, so 
Um, when we became scattered, when we were uh, displaced out of our homeland, we became strangers. All right. So that peculiar people that Peter was talking to is us. And, and that precepts back to Deuteronomy chapter 14 and verse 2. We are that peculiar people. We are that peculiar people that were given the peculiar laws of God. And that's what we're teaching our people today, to, to raise them back up into the understanding of who they are and that we must repent, all right, in order for us to get the kingdom. All right, let's jump down to verse... The uh, verse, uh, chapter 14 is pretty clear cut as far as um, uh, the, the laws of the clean and the unclean foods. But I do want to bring this up. Let's jump down to verse 22. And thou shalt surely tithe all the increase of thy seed that the field bringeth forth year by year. So we're tithing of our seed. Okay. We're tithing of the increase of our seed and what we read earlier. I don't want y'all to forget the point. Let's go back to chapter 11. I don't want y'all to forget the point because this, this is all goes together. Chapter 11 and verse 13. Yeah, 13. And it shall come to pass, if ye shall hearken diligently unto my commandments, which I command thee this day, to love the Lord your God, and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul, that I will give you rain, I will give you the rain of your land in his due season. Right? The first and the latter rain, that thou mayest gather in thy corn and thy wine and thine oil. And I will send grass in the fields for thy cattle that thou mayest eat and be full. So now let's go back. Let's go back. Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 22. And thou shalt, surely, thou shalt truly tithe all the increase of thy seed that the field bringeth forth year by year. And thou shalt eat before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose to place his name there the tithe of thy corn, right? We just read that in, um, in, in Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 14. The tithe of thy corn, all right? Of thy wine and of thine oil and the firstlings of thy herds and of thy flocks that thou mayest learn to fear the Lord thy God always. Now, um... So what we're reading is when it says that thou mayest learn to fear the Lord thy God always. Why? Because if we didn't keep his commandments, what would happen? He said he would set up heaven. He wouldn't give us the corn and the, and the, I mean, I'm sorry. He wouldn't give us the rain. All right. And then our land would be what? It would be chapped. It would be parched. We would have famines. So that's how we would learn how to fear the Lord thy God. In today's time, we're so disconnected from that because why? Our enemy feeds us. Our oppressors are nourishing us. So we go, you go to Kroger's, you go to Publix, you go to Winn-Dixie, you go to Albertsons to get your food. So we, we are so disconnected from that fear of the Lord right now. In that sense, we got to bring this out to our people. We got to give the understanding. That's why we must read the laws, okay? And that's why we're going through the four chapters a day, starting from Genesis all the way to Revelation, okay? Because we got to gain the understanding that we are the Israelites. And as you see what's going on, all these other nations are seeing that we are waking up and what's happening. They, they're, they're getting scared. They're getting scared that how is it that these people are still waking up into the knowledge of who they are? It's only by the Spirit of the Lord, all right? All right, so brothers and sisters, that's going to conclude um, four chapters today. I pray you got something out of it. Again, if you have questions, um, go on Facebook to the four chapters uh, and submit your questions there. And the captains will um, answer your questions. 
Remember, we got classes three times a day, seven days a week. Um, give to the Boosters Club. Join the Booster Club if you haven't, and if you, uh, uh, or give to the Booster Club, okay? Um, and repent. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, all right? And so with that, I'm going to say, Salon fam, most, most high Christ bless. Lord willing, I'll see you the next time.